videos this week. Although, the second video is probably gonna drop on Saturday. I'm doing two short videos this week instead of one long video. So in theory, today's video should be quick. To give credit where credit is due, today's video is because of Daniel, who asked, any tips on flying a drone? Just picked one up, would love some tips and tricks, especially when traveling. Well, Daniel, today's video is for you. And anyone else that just wants better drone footage. Specifically, drone shots on YouTube. I love watching YouTube. It's pretty much my favorite thing. I don't really watch TV or anything else but YouTube. And people kind of drive me nuts with their drone shots because they break some of the rules or tips and tricks that I'm gonna mention today. Even some of my friends that are on YouTube, when you watch this video, you're gonna be like, oh, I do break those rules a lot. Quit doing that. I won't name names, but you know who you are. All right, for today, I'm gonna give you five tips and tricks for better drone footage. Oh, how sad that was. The first four are tips and tricks that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. And the fifth one is one that everybody talks about, which should let you know it's important. All right, number one tip for better drone footage. One input, maybe two. Here's the thing. People get up in the air and they just start flying around like crazy and rawr, rawr, looking this way, looking that way, going up, going down. It looks horrible. With drones, to get cinematic footage, less is more. Now, when I say one input, maybe two, what I'm saying is inputs into the controller. One input might be up. Get the drone somewhere really cool and then just say up. And the drone's just gonna go Wah! and just lift up and it's this really smooth lifting shot. Don't turn, don't look around, don't do anything. Get in place and then just say up one input. Now, sometimes two inputs is cool. You could get to a spot, you kind of line it up on a really cool thing and you get really low to the ground. You say forward and up. Now this time you're gonna kind of go and lift as you kind of move through something. Beautiful footage. Another example might be right slide. So you're just gonna go Again, less is more. It looks great, I love it. With that, you could do two inputs where you slide to the right and then you look left, which is gonna create that, that kind of pan around shot where you're looking at, you kind of focus on one thing, you start sliding right and then you start looking left and it kind of goes like this. DJI has a thing where you can kind of do that automatically, but it's weird to get into. I usually just do it manually. So tip number one, one input, maybe two. Tip number two, do not course correct, or at least not during the shot. A lot of times I'll see creators get their drone perfectly lined up on this like cool street, and then they'll start going and they're flying forward, but they're they're realizing that they're kind of going this way, so they go nee, 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 nee. Oh, it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. You can totally course correct, just don't include it in your footage. With that one input concept, get lined up on that road or whatever you wanna fly on, go forward and just keep going. If you get off a little bit, readjust and start a new shot. Don't continue the same shot with your course corrections in there. Remember when we talked about the GoPro and when the pole is in the shot, it kinda shakes you out of the frame of seeing the shot and you, you start seeing the camera, you see how the shot was made. That's what happens when you course correct. When you just do this one like ah, drone shot, it's beautiful. But as soon as you go, mer, 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 I go, oh, drone. I see the camera operator. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Yeah, tip number two, don't course correct during a shot. Tip number three, and I've said this tip in previous videos where I'm talking about vlogging, I think I might have said it in a GoPro video, I'm not sure, count to five. So let's add these tips all together. One input, don't course correct, and count to five. So just like we were talking about that road or that rising shot or, or whatever shot that you kind of lock into, get your, your inputs dialed and then just hold. Don't move your fingers and count to five. Now what this is gonna do is put the drone into a singular path. Again, even with two inputs like up 
and forward at the same time, it creates this singular path that the drone is on. And like we said, you don't want to course correct. So create that singular path by just going one, two, three, four, five, let go. Or continue the shot, whatever you want. But make sure that for each singular path that you put the drone into, you at least give yourself five seconds to pull from later. The worst thing in the world is when you get into edit, you're like, oh, this is a sweet shot, and you pull it down. And remember the, the timing video where we have, we count the times? If you don't remember that video, click here. It's how you edit to music. So you're editing your drone footage to music, and you know that you need eight counts. And you put the drone shot on there, and you look at it, and it's like, oh, yeah, this looks so sweet. And then it counts six, you're like, Meh, and you, you turn. Oh, it's the worst. Count to five. Rarely are you gonna use more than five seconds of a singular shot. If you know that you're using really slow music or you're going to use really slow music, I don't know, count to eight or 10 or 20. Number four, and this isn't so much a tip as much as it's something to keep in mind, like a, a thought to just always have in the back of your head. Proximity equals movement. Now, what I mean by that is the closer you are to something, the more movement you're gonna see. You know when you're in an airplane and you're at like 30,000 feet and you look down and you see the ground? You're going like 500 miles per hour through the sky, but you look at the ground that it's barely moving. The same is true for drone shots. The higher you are, or the more pulled back you are from something, even if you're at full speed, which also don't do, because that looks kind of wonky, even if you're going very fast, it looks slow. So with proximity equals movement, maybe you fly close to a cliff as, you, as you're looking at the beach. So there's kind of this foreground element that's moving fast. In Thailand, I flew through these rocks. So the rocks kind of seemed like they were moving fast in the shot and the, the beach in the background was kind of moving slow in the shot. It just makes it more interesting. And sometimes you want slow movement in your shot. Maybe you have this like long build soundtrack that you're gonna lay this over where it's just like Is that Little Mermaid? That's weird. Hey, did you guys know that Morgan, my wife, she used to do princess parties when we first met and my favorite one to ever see her do was Ariel, because that was my favorite. Disney princess, here's a picture of my wife as Ariel. <laughs> She's gonna kill me that I put that in there. Okay, so tip number four, proximity equals movement. If you want more movement, get closer to the ground or closer to an object. If you want less movement, get higher or further away from said thing. And number five, tip. Get yourself some ND filters. These are from uh, Polar Pro. I'll link them below. I've had them for a while. I'm sure there's like a new version of them. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. I don't use them very much for my GoPro, but I always use them for my Mavic. The reason to use ND filters is so you can maintain the 180 rule, which basically says your shutter speed should be about twice what your frame rate is. So if you're at 24 frames a second, you want your shutter speed to be at 1 50th of a second. If you want 30 frames a second, you're at 1 60th of a second. If you want 60 frames a second, you're at 1 1 25th of a second, and so on if your drone does faster than that. Usually, in order to maintain those shutter speeds, you need an ND filter, because you'll crank your shutter speed down to 1 50th of a second, you'll drop your ISO down to 100, and it's still just like, poof, way too bright to get any sort of shot that looks good. So you throw sunglasses, on your camera, that reduces the light level, and then you're able to maintain those settings. If for some reason you don't understand how aperture, ISO, and shutter speed work together, click click that link. That video is like the basis, the core foundation for anything photo video. If you're using a drone or a GoPro or a point and shoot or a professional camera, you need to understand how aperture, ISO, and shutter speed work together. That'll make using ND filters make a lot more sense. And this tip is the one that everyone talks about, which again, lets you know it's important. And that is it for today. Five tips for better drone footage. And uh, yeah, I hope this makes YouTube a better place for drone videos. I just, I just hate watching bad drone videos. It breaks my heart. I do, I say it breaks my heart. It does. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <coughs>
Got a frog in my throat. Mm. How now, brown cow? It's still there. <coughs> it makes me sound sexy. How do you like my deep voice? Did I hit record? What if I didn't hit record on any of this? I hit record. Woohoo! Yes, I hit record. <laughs>